Hello everybody, quick announcement video, sort of, kind of covering the new Tokushu Heiki crafting event because they have actually published how you can go about um, getting these snazzy vehicles. So, without further ado, let's get stuck in. The wait is over, the crafting event has returned, as if anyone was actually waiting for another one of these hell holes. And this time we've got some very interesting vehicles, which we have already covered. In this article we've detailed each part of the step-by-step -step, which will help understand what you'll need to complete to earn these amazing prizes. So uh, it starts today actually at midday, at least by my time, and uh, ends until October the 9th so you have ish about two weeks to do it, maybe just under. So good luck uh, to those that are going to do it. You have the Japanese bomber, the Japanese boat, an American, yes I know it's American, um, rocket tank and a snazzy but Chinese super saber. Um, so, oh interesting. Uh, yeah, so they could, the two more expensive prizes, actually you get a bigger time span. Actually just ignore me, just stick to the regular time span. How to participate. So play play matches in multiplayer modes, you know, just earn mission score like usual. And at the end of each match you'll receive a drop, the resource box. Opening this box will give you materials, and with the materials you can assemble parts of the missile. So you're building a missile this time. An exciting addition to the Tokushu Heiki event is that you've been asking for is that simulator players can now earn resource boxes. So, okay, fair enough. The Tokushu Heiki event differs from previous crafting build events in its duration and limit on the number of items dropped during your matches. Items and crates will drop in matches over 13 days instead of 11, that's probably a good change. And in addition to this, the maximum possible number of items dropped has been increased so that there is enough for 6 builds instead of 4, also a good change. This means that during this event you'll be able to get 2 main prizes that cost 3 test reports instead of 1 main prize, which has been the case in the previous craft events. So you actually have the potential to get more done this time, at least theoretically. Terms of the event. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details because it seems to be it's more or less just how the old crafting events work. If you know, you know, basically. Otherwise it would kind of just take some figuring out on your own. Basically you open a crate, you get a bunch of random things, you have to build some things and then eventually when you make a big thing you can exchange it for one of the vehicles. All event items can be obtained in the following game modes, obviously. The number of boxes, number of items received in battle is limited. Resource boxes up to 30 a day. I mean if you're getting 30 a day then you've pretty much got it in the bag. Uh, development process data up to 10 a day and upgrade toolkits 450 for the entire event. You can track the progress of obtaining items, achievements, Tokushi Heiki, obviously. Hmm. Just trying to pick out anything else that's particularly important. I'm kind of just saying the same few things again. So it is your standard run the mill crafting event. Hmm. And obviously, once you've done them, be sure to exchange the test reports, which are the things you're trying to make for the actual vehicles themselves, because you don't want to do all this and then forget to actually exchange them. Otherwise, that would be a colossal waste of time. So there you go. Brief summary on the Takushi Heiki event. It's probably best you just check it out for yourselves. I probably won't be participating because there's not really a vehicle that I am super interested in. If it doesn't take that long, I might get the Ki-48 too, just because that will be funny. But other than that, not really. I mean, that's only one test report, so theoretically that wouldn't take that long. And while there is a Super Saver and it is my favourite plane, it is for China. I don't really play China anymore. If it was like an American 50s jet, hell yeah, sign me down. But it's not. So it isn't. So I'm not going to bother. But there you go. If you are interested, then obviously check it out. And as well as this, something interesting that I had to just you know cover the new pages of history I don't know if anyone actually bothers with these but the pages of history are basically responsible for giving you cool new profile icons and I don't know about anyone else but I'm always on the hunt for a replacement profile icon I've had the one that I currently use the um, I think she's a Ren or not a Ren a 
uh, Women's Auxiliary Air Force or something. I might have got that name wrong. Um, it's a lady next to a Spitfire. And I've had it for years, I like it, but I've always been looking to see if I can finally replace it. And I finally can, because this month you can unlock the one and only Guttery Sergeant John Bassalone from the US Marine Corps. Any of those that have known a bit about history, especially obviously that of the Second World War and the Pacific Theatre, or if you, like me, have actually watched the Pacific, the TV show, then you will know who John Bassalone is, and for that reason I am definitely going to get my hands on this as soon as I can. And that should, hopefully, be my new go-to profile icon, so that's pretty cool. And there you have it, that's uh, just some random stuff to cover there. And uh, obviously do let me know if you are taking part in the event, and if you're going after that profile icon as well. Obviously that will be great to hear from you in the comments down below, because comments do help get the outreach of a video further, and of course subscribing helps with that as well. So hit that like button, comment down below, and subscribe for more content, and I'll catch you in the next one.